in the previous class we derived the phase space for the two body final state and capital P is the initial state momentum and P1 and P2 are four momenta for two particles with mass M1 and M2 the definition says oh it's wrong raise minus 6 here there is an energy momentum delta function that is a four dimensional delta function that energy of the initial state is uh, the sum of the energies of the final states and momentum of the initial state is the same as the sum of the momenta for the two body state it is convention to put 2 pi for each dimension so we have 2 pi to the fourth power and we have 2 pi to the fourth power for the four dimensional integral but there was a 2 pi in front of the delta function that represents the mesh condition for the particle number one and particle two and there are two theta functions that constrain the energy of a particle is always a positive definite. We learned that this is expressed in terms of an integral, four dimensional integral, and this measure is invariant on the Lorentz transformation. And exponential of this p dot x, which is invariant so this is a 2 pi to the fourth power four dimensional delta function of p and this is this quantity is invariant on the Lorentz transformation and this is a delta function which whose argument is a p squared minus m one squared that means this argument itself is invariant at the Lorentz transformation so the whole object is invariant D, D, D4, P1, D4, P2, they are also invariant measure. And there are two theta functions, but Lorentz transformation does not flip the energy as a sign. So if it at the rest of the frame, the mass of a particle is positive, and if we boost the particle, then the energy, absolute value of the energy increases, the sign does not change. So the whole object is, is invariant. So phase space element is invariant on the Lorentz transformation. But we will simplify this expression and then we will re-parameterize that phase space in a simple uh, system. Usually we choose the center of mass frame. All right. So let us calculate this part first and we have four dimensional delta function uh, four dimensional measure of the momentum and they can be separated into energy part and the momentum part and energy part can be integrated out because of this delta function and delta function has energy squared subtracted by momentum squared minus mass squared and it is actually square root of energy squared squared uh, square root of uh, momentum squared plus uh, mass squared, that is energy. So this constraint gives energy is energy is a square root of momentum squared plus mass squared. So that's just the unshell condition. And delta function has two poles, uh, two zeros. Uh, one is that energy is a uh, minus square root momentum squared plus mass squared. The other zero appears at the positive energy part okay? so there is negative energy and positive energy but there is a theta function that requires energy is a positive so we just collect on single term this term vanishes exactly and two times the square root this square root is actually energy of this particle and that energy is completely fixed by the unsure condition so what we have found is that 
replace this line with uh, momentum, free momentum integral divided by two times energy of the particle and we have two pi to the third, uh, third power and, and again the similar factor with the index 2 appears uh, replaces this part and combining two pi's we have 2 pi to the fourth power coming from the energy momentum delta function and minus 6 comes from this 3 by 2 uh, 2 third power so this is uh, 1 over 2 pi squared and then we have free momentum integral p1 and p2 and let us integrate out p2 momentum then among four energy momentum delta function we end up with the energy delta function only this is one dimensional delta function and then we have overall factor 2e1 2e2 and we have only a single momentum integral until now we have not used any frame dependence so it is completely independent of the frame of reference so this part I got a question regarding this part of the equation so let me simplify that part this part is now ex explained once again let us consider the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of delta function whose argument is x squared minus a squared and I have a, another theta function theta function appears as an energy constraint the energy is a positive definite and then integrate over x with an arbitrary function f of x this a squared can be expressed as the absolute values of square and they are, uh, this part is factorized in two pieces yeah. so we have two poles and at the positive value and at the negative value and over a factor is just over a factor substituted by that zero so if I substitute a absolute value of a to here then we have 2a in the denominator for this zero, I have minus 2a absolute value, but if we pull this over a factor out, I have it in the denominator with absolute value of that. Now we consider the theta function, and theta function is a, theta is a 1 for positive x and 0 for negative x. We find the delta function does not vanish only at the positive value and does not vanish at negative value so if I multiply with the theta function this delta function vanishes and the only contribution is this and it, this one does not project out uh, it, this one is just identity projection to the delta function with a positive zero so we just ignore this theta function to the first part and we remove this second term and then now we have trivial integral that after integrating over x x is replaced with absolute value of a so our final result is f of absolute value of a divided by 2 absolute value of a all right so we return to this parameterization that is invariant under Lorentz transformation. First, let's see what happens if we choose the reference frame as a center of mass frame. At the center of mass frame, uh, center of momentum frame, two particles, final state two particles, move in opposite direction with the same magnitude. So the initial state capture P is a full momentum becomes energy comma total momentum, but this energy is just rest mass and zero momentum. Right? So energy 
of the initial state is just it's a rest mass and E1 is now simplified as a function of momentum P of a particle okay it used to be P1 squared and P2 squared vector squared however we in the center mass frame it is just the p square single variable dependence if you make use of that fact and uh, substitute those energies inside uh, the argument of the delta function we find that there's a delta function mass of the matter particle subtracted by energies of the two finer state particles let us rewrite this momentum measure, the three dimensional momentum measure, as a product of the solid angle integral and the magnitude of the momentum. P1 is now dP1 is now expressed as dQp, and this is product of solid angle and this is three dimension, so r squared dr squared. And we know that the angular integral is over the azimuth angle from 0 to 2 pi and cosine theta from minus 1 to plus 1. So if, if we just integrate over the angle, we will have 4 pi. But usually, the space space will be multiplied by a matrix element squared that is a probability of the transition so we, we do, do not usually uh, we usually do not integrate over the angle but in many cases in many cases we have a little symmetry then we do not integrate over cosine theta but we may sometimes we may integrate over the phi anyway we would like to keep them as general formula formula as possible and we are inclined to integrate over the momentum, magnitude of the momentum. So there is a delta function with an argument, but this is a function of that variable. So we, we might want to use some relation. Here we already made use of that. That formulation was what? Delta function of f of x equals sum of i delta x minus xi divided by okay we assume that f of x has a zero at x equals i and we do not assume that we, there is a double zero okay if it is just a simple zero that means we do not have x minus uh, we do have x minus xi so if, if it is in case it is factorized for example this kind of form or this we will have delta x minus a and then substitute a to x and divide it by uh, divide this vector of uh, the absolute value of this vector something like that okay so we have some zero we have some zero for this argument and it, actually there are not many solutions, uh, there is a, only a single solution. We remember that value was what? Absolute value of P was what? Forgot. Absolute value of P is half of capital M lambda function, one half.
right? So this guy has a zero at this value. So what I'd like to do is just rewrite this guy. as a product of plus some cost. If I know this constant, then It will be something like that. So I'm interested in calculating this part. Okay? So this is the way to compute that. That is actually, actually, what? Take the derivative of this. This is e of e one of function of p, e two of function of absolute value of p. Take the derivative and take the absolute value. Right? So I'd like to simplify this. Then here, or perhaps I raise something. So let us compute this part by part. If I take the derivative with respect to P, M is constant, so it vanishes. If I take the derivative of this, then I have P square root m1 squared plus absolute value p squared. This is power is one half. So I have one half. So factor of two in the denominator. This power becomes minus one half. That is a square root of m1 squared plus square of the absolute value of p. And by making use of chain rule, I have two p in the numerator and simplify this, this is energy. So we have P absolute value divided by energy of the particle. We can make use of the same method to compute M2 P squared and the final answer is E2 P, right? So, M minus E1 minus E2 is now absolute value is E1 P E2 P right so factored out and combine the denominator I have E1 E2 P E1 plus E2 and some of the two energies is the rest mass of that particle, the matter particle. So we have P capital M divided by E1 and E2. So if we substitute that delta function, P absolute value, one half of M, multiplied by its inverse okay so let us substitute this this is this right oh p there is something wrong oh, right right here 
I have included p squared in the numerator. In that case, we have p in the numerator. So, this is this part. Right? If we substitute that one, I have angle integral over the solid angle and over a factor 2 pi and substitute this guy to here I have absolute value of A, a P E1 need to divide by mass of the matter particle and remember we have four times product of the two energies so we find that the product of the two energies cancel they cancel and I have a 4 here, capital M here, absolute value of P here. And usually, we integrate over the angle. So it's uh, convenient to normalize the angle. I divide this angle by 4 pi. Then it becomes angle average and multiply 4 pi. So that does not change anything in the final answer. So keep this 4 pi in here, just below the omega. And I have a factor of 4 cancels. I have a factor of 4 in the denominator, pi over pi squared. So if I, I should have 2 or 4 pi. But I multiply 2 in the numerator, so I got uh, 8 pi. The reason why I have multiplied 2 here is is the fact that absolute value of P was like that. Right? So if I divide both sides, it becomes this. And this value becomes 1 if the two final state particles are massless. Okay? So that's the reason why I, use, I usually parameterize like that. For massless particle, two body phase space is this is just 1, and after it, if, the, there, if there is a no angle dependence, this integral is just 1. So for the massless particle with a non-angular dependence, integral of the phase space of two-body final state for the massless particle is just one over eight pi. All right, that's. It.